Okay, well I've been pondering how in the heck am I going to do this. Um, I realized my last YouTube video on uh, just doing the set and the get methods were about 40 minutes in total with a unnecessary 10 minute overview video but still that was made to concise all the other videos to um, save time. You didn't have to watch the whole 30 minutes, just watch the overview. If you didn't understand something, watch the detailed 30 minute videos. But um, in any case, this took me several hours to figure out. Um, maybe I'm just noobish to programming, but um, I imagine that it would take me quite a few videos, YouTube videos, to probably, um, whatchamacallit, to present this so I figure I'm just going to do a concise overview of everything that we have here so let's get started um, we create the class so uh, let me show you my date class this is my date class alright so I have the date test and the date class so here it's just like the other one and if you don't know uh, how the other one works I mean uh, watch the detailed YouTube videos the 30 minutes and you'll see we have our private instance variables with a day month year all initialized to an integer uh, we have a constructor and you'll notice uh, I have my code sort of hidden um, I do that for a couple reasons uh, I, I don't want to build this source code for you because um, it, it, I'm in programming this uh, program uh, I realize that there are not too many ways to do this program I mean you, you can use your imagination and, and maybe find a, a few different ways of doing it than I did but um, uh, I don't want to limit your imagination so I'm just going going to basically show you the methods and I'll, I'll open a couple up for you and uh, you'll see it, this hides like uh, these lines lines 13 through 17 here so basic constructor just like the other one we use we call the set day method and set the day parameter using the set day method and uh, the day method is just sit, taking the parameter and putting it into the private instance variable very simple all the date all the set methods work the same way get method just like the other one just simply returns an integer uh, which would which in this case is day so very easy straightforward uh, just like in the other one I had recommended doing a print screen uh, method so we can see here we have um, we're printing out month and we concatenate that with a slash and we could uh, we and these are the private instance variables mind you so it um, shoots out it outputs the text the actual inputted number month uh, which might be I don't know one through tw uh, number one through 12 January February whatever the day and the year so I mean very simple display method nothing special I guess if you want to make it more special um, you could probably put in some type of maybe switch um, structure here that if they uh, put in I don't know uh, one for the month uh, it'll print out January but wh whatever you want whatever you want so that's the display method then um, I made a bunch of methods here and uh, mind you with that you complete the basic requirements of the assignment you don't have to do anything more on that but um, to get the extra credit uh, you have to validate that the date is between 1900 the years between 1900 3000 or at least that was the minimum you can make the dates uh, even bigger if you want to 19 1800 to 4000 if you want or if you could get it unlimited uh, you're pretty sm that's pretty cool um, but uh, I didn't want to work too hard personally so I have uh, split all of these methods up I have a detect error master and what this method is it's basically using all these other methods to determine if there is an error or not so this detect error with year uh, I could show you this one this is rather simple um, if the year is outside uh, the range of 1900 or 3000 display this error message and return a true statement you'll notice all these methods are uh, re boolean return statements so if an error is detected with the year it will return a true statement okay and um, basically um, I'll also show you the error master that's no problem uh, if you detect the error of the year return true so it's what's it going to return true to probably uh, something in the date test method that'll um, tell it maybe to restart uh, I'll have uh, the whole thing in maybe a for loop of some type right 
and um, if the detect error master returns a true statement then just restart uh, prompt the user again that he input an incorrect uh, value so he can get that so we have detect error with year so if it's outside the range of 1900 and 3000 um, display error message if it's an error with the month uh, detect if it's between 1 and 12 if it's outside that um, oh detect if years increment of 400 this is important uh, let me show you how um, how the basic um, leap years work so 1900 February 28th you'll notice that there's no uh, 29th extra day it's not a leap year but um, it increments every four years and 1900 should be part of it right there should be a leap year with uh, the extra day the 29th but the way this works uh, maybe I can google it real quick let me see google Ooh. the way it works is that every four years there's a leap year except for increments of a hundred a list of leap years but there's also another catch with that so we see here every four years 1904 1908 1912 a whole bunch of leap years all right but we'll see that for example the years 2100 2200 2300 which are also increments of four are not present all right so increments of 100 are not leap years however increments of 400 2000 2400 2800 happen to be uh, leap years themselves so you have to be careful with this so you have to sort of determine you have to detect if the year is an increment of 400 meaning it is a leap year and if it's an increment of 100 it's not a leap year so basically in my detective year is a leap year I detect uh, every single year that's an increment of 4 then I subtract every um, year which is an increment of 100 and I add uh, increments of 400 which basically gives you an accurate amount of leap years um, in the in the various millennia all right so that's that now if uh, detect error with day non leap year I, I you can again uh, split this up into however you want and um, this basically detects uh, basically if you're in the month of February and uh, it's the 29th um, this will return an error because there's no 29th in a non leap year and then leap year uh, there is a 29th so return uh, no error you know and it'll also be checking that the user is not putting in uh, a value for the day such as uh, it is uh, January uh, the 32nd uh, that's not going to work and uh, you can notice that these um, if you look at the line numbers here um, these have the same exact number of lines of code in them the only difference is uh, one has uh, one is set uh, for the 28th to stop in February and one is set to the 29th so you can actually work with that and make it a bit different than mine alright I got uh, about a minute and 30 seconds left so um, what else do we have here I the determined days of the week method pretty tough um, basically Wow, I had to create these methods again to determine the amount of years of 100. Basically, I use this to um, for the leap years again uh, to get an accurate amount. And uh, let's see, every single and this method uh, counts all the years except non-leap years. So we have it counting. Let's see. Uh, 1901, 1902, 1903, then 1905. See, it skips. And uh, the leap years have it uh, counting 1904, 1908, 1912. So this adds basically 365 days. This adds 366 days. And then I have um, basically a method here which basically counts. I know that January 1st is a Monday. So January 8th is also a Monday January um, uh, it, it, the, it increments in seven so you can determine it that way I'm sorta out of time so I'm hoping that this was sufficient enough to help you uh, basically calling the date test uh, in the main method is uh, no problem so I actually have to 
stop this video right now because I'm out of time. Take care, guys. Good luck.